Today I'm going to talk about something that I decided that I will not talk. Now to the latest trend that's sweeping the internet. So called NFT. They're now selling for huge bucks. $69 million. Oh so what's behind this latest craze? That is the question to ask. But everyone is asking me about NFTs. Yes, NFTs. However, I'm not going to explain the second cohort and I'm going to explain what an artist needs to know. So if you want to understand what is an NFT, why it is important for me as an artist to understand that? Should I have one? Come with me. Hi, I'm Sira. I was born in an artistic family and as an agent, manager and producer, I've worked for many years selling artists from all around the world. Today, I want to help you to become a full-time artist. I am Sira and I'm here to help you to become a full-time artist. Today I'm going to talk about NFTs. What is an NFT to start with? NFT is a no fundable token. Great, that's the end of the video, bye. No, right? Makes no sense for you. Yeah, because it makes no sense for me as well. I need to make some research to understand. And I don't like the word fundable, so I'm going to change for replaceable. So something that is not replaceable is something that cannot be substituted by any other thing. So if I have my cough mug that I love, by the way, and for mistake, I just poof, throw on the floor and I break it. I can go to a store and buy a new one. It's a replaceable item. However, if I have a um, Mona Lisa, Mona Lisa is not replaceable. Mona Lisa is one Mona Lisa. I can take a picture, I can draw it, my own version. I can be an amazing painter and do exactly equal with the same colors, with the same shades and everything but will not be Mona Lisa. No ma'am. No ma'am. No ma'am. No ma'am. There is just one Mona Lisa, and this Mona Lisa is unreplaceable. And when something is unreplaceable, this thing has value because it cannot be substituted by any other thing. In art, we talk a lot about authenticity. Authenticity is when you certificate that an art piece is original and unique. How you do that? You issue a certificate of authentication and you will need this certificate if you want to sell your artwork. So if I have a Monet in my house, for example, and I decided to go to an auction house to sell it, I need to have the certificate of authentication. If I don't have this, my paint has no value because I cannot prove that this is unique and authentic. Just this type of art that is one only piece and the world can have a certificate of authentication, sometimes we can have a limited editions. My good friend Buka gave me a great idea. After seeing this artwork, he was like, you know, you should make collector's edition prints of these, make them super limited edition, hand sign them, hand number them, and make them limited quantities and available for a short time. And the artist we're going to put on the foot of the art, how many of those are. So you can have like the number three of 15, for example, and each one of them will have this little number on the bottom. It means that it's not original. No, they are original, but they are limited. And the value is a little bit less than, well, something that is unique. The same way it happens when you have something that is the original word piece and then limited prints of that. The original one will always be more valuable than the others reproductions of the first one. So it's not really new that we have certificate of authentications for arts in general. The thing is that art develop itself over time. And now art doesn't need to be something real that I can touch with my hands 
can be an idea, a conceptual art is an idea and can be reproduced every time that it is exhibited. And I have examples like this. And this. And this. And also this one that actually the cleaning agent decided to tie it up after what was a problem. A conception art is something that is really interesting since you were selling an idea, you were selling something that is not tangible. And this is very funny in the case of Comedian because it's a conceptual artwork. The buyers did not purchase actual bananas and duct tape. They paid $120,000 or $150,000 for an idea. All they're getting is a certificate of authenticity that proves it's a verified artwork by Maurizio Catalan and instructions for how to install it. Can anyone who wants to buy a banana from the grocery store and tape it to the wall in the exact same way? Yes, but only people with a certificate are technically owners of Comedian, which they can replenish as often as needed with a fresh banana and duct tape. The museums that own the certificate are the only ones who can rightfully display a banana duct tape to a wall this way and put a label next to it with Catalan's name on it. I'm guessing they'll have the right to loan out the certificate to other institutions too, who will likely be clamoring to get in on a piece of the banana action. The comedian started to be sold for $120,000. They were a limited edition and the last one was sold for $150,000. And this banana has value because it's a banana with a duct tape. No, because this is an idea of an artist and it was certificate in a document. What is kind of crazy is that there is no official institution that issues this type of document. If my mom decides to sell this house, for example, she needs to have a special document to do that. And this document is issued by a specific institution. I cannot write something on a paper and say that this is the document. But in art, it's almost like this. Any artist can issue its own certificate of authentication. It can gain some leverage with some signatures from a publisher or from an art dealer or some other institutions like that, but there is not a one official institution who regulates this thing. What sometimes can make it really complicated if you have an artwork that you want to sell in another place. Let's come to my Monet again. And I decided to take the Monet that I bought in Paris and I'm going to sell it in Hong Kong. Can you imagine how much paperwork I need to pass through? It's crazy. Coming back to the ideas of NFTs, NFTs are exactly that, the certificate of authentications of something that is untangible. You can certificate anything, a song, an idea, a GIF image, this YouTube video, some special moments, an NBA, anything. You can create an authentication and now that you can say who owns that thing, you can sell it. And now you don't have all these problems of translating and investigating to see if the artwork is real or not. You have a one system that is proved back on technology that makes it easier for you to sell anything that you want and certificate that this is unique and original and you can say who is the owner. So now, if you own a song, you can sell this song to another person. You can buy your favorite NBA moments and own that to yourself. For fans who got to witness LeBron James dunk against the Houston Rockets, it might have been a priceless moment. But for NBA Top Shot collectors like Michael Levy, 
Right now, that dunk is worth almost $400,000. You can decide to buy a special gift image and give as a present on Christmas. Now, anything that is intangible can be certified as original, can have a ownership and can be sold. But just because it can be sold, it means that it will be sold? Not really. You buy things for two reasons because this thing has value to you, so you want that to yourself and you buy that, or because you believe that this has value overall and you can make an investment selling this on the future. So if I go to YouTube right now, for example, and I see that some of those creators have a lot of potential and I buy one of their videos using NFTs and I hold this ownership for five years and this person becomes a pop star, now this video has way more value than it has in the beginning. And I could make a lot of money buying this NFT. Or I can just go on my favorite singer and buy a song that I love because I want that and this has value to me. The thing is that value is something that is emotional you need to have some emotional connection with this. It's something that is personal. It means that it changes from person to person and it is moldable or variable. You use the word that you decide. It means that can vary over time. Things that are not super valuable right now can be super valuable in the future or something that's super valuable right now can be not valuable in the future. And you see this on the stock market all the time. What you have there actually are shares of a company that if the company rise in value, your share rise in value. If this company break, you lose the value for those shares. When you have an NFT for an artist or for a brand, you are doing exactly the same. It's almost like you are buying a share of that person. So if you love your favorite singer and you can buy a share of his brand and you imagine that in the future this person will be more famous than it is right now, this share can go up in value and this NFT will bring you money. However, it's not everything that is valuable on everyone's eyes. I have with me all the time a picture of my dad, for example, and this is super valuable for me because I have an emotional connection with this picture and with my dad and it's personal. So in my opinion, this is super valuable and it's moldable because right now, especially after my dad passed away, this is really important for me. But if my dad was here with me and we had a huge fight, for example, maybe this picture was, would not be so valuable anymore. But in this case, right now, this picture is super valuable for me. But if I go to you and I say that I want you to buy this picture for a thousand dollars, would you buy it? Probably not, because it doesn't have value to you. And it doesn't have a value to a group of people. So you will not invest on buying a picture of my dad. But maybe you're going to invest on buying a picture from Rihanna because maybe in the future Rihanna can get even more famous than she is right now. Maybe it's interesting for you to see new artists that you imagine that they have potential and you buy an NFT from their artwork or from their content right now and you wait to see how they will be in five years. And if you are imagined to sell your NFTs, you need to understand how people will see the value on your art piece. Because the value is always on the eyes of the beholder, actually, on the eyes of the buyer. The buyer needs to see the value of the product or the sale will never happen. If you are putting your artwork to sell without thinking on how I'm going to prove that this artwork is valuable 
to my buyers, it's really possible that no one will buy from you. So more than understand if you should use this platform because NFT is almost like a system or a platform for you to sell, you need to understand how you're going to build value to your brand and to your art pieces so people will want them. And when they want your artwork, they can choose if they are going to buy in an NFT, if they're going to buy the real piece that you have in hands, or using any other type of platform. NFTs are amazing and they are solving problems that we have for a long time. They are giving a certificate of authentication for things that are intangible. You can give ownership to an idea what was super hard to do before. But this idea will just be sold if there is value behind that. So if you have any other question about how are you going to use these NFTs on your life, please let me know here in the comment section below or send me a direct message because I need to tell you guys that now we have an exclusive group just for artists where we discuss all of those things. It's a peer group that actually I put some agents and some publishers and some labels inside as well. But the idea is that it's a safe place for us to discuss the business part of art. It's a place where we're going to discuss how we're going to sell your artwork, how we're going to bring value to your pieces, how you create your brand, how you put prices, how you become a successful full-time artist. If you want to join us, go here in the comment section below or just go on this link right here and join for free. So you can show your artwork, ask for advice, connect with other people and make the network that will help you to grow. See you next week. I need to tell you that I have a full masterclass for free. How can you take the leap and become the artist that you want to become? It's not a sales pitch. In this masterclass, I will help you with a real training that will give you the step by step. So if you want to check this, go here in this website and you watch a two hour class totally for free so you can start to be a full-time artist right now. Thank you so much for keeping making art.